I'm sure by now that many of you are familiar with water brushes. They have the uh, brush on the end and your water is contained right here in the handle. They're very handy for journal work and for sketching, travel sketching. Not so wonderful for um, larger works and I will demonstrate why. First though, we're going to compare some of the brands and let you see what they're like. This first one is a Sakura and it has, I believe this is the medium. That's, uh, they come in three sizes of course. And this is the little travel Sakura, which is a very cool little thing. It will fit in a very small travel kit, but the um, you don't want to lose this little bit or you don't have any way to keep your water in. Then it just screws together, oops, that direction. And it's quite handy. Very cute little thing. The only difficulty with this one, aside from the fact that the brush itself is pretty small, is this is not a lot of water. Let me demonstrate. This is a teaspoon. And it doesn't quite hold a full teaspoonful. That's not a lot of water for painting with. Trust me on this one. So we'll worry about that one later. These are Aquash, which is a very nice brand. Oops, that's the same size. And it fills easily too. Taking that off and holding the, uh, the working end, the water end, under a faucet. And just filling it up that way. Um, oops. They screw on differently so I get confused, sorry. The only problem I have with the Aquash, it's very nice because it's soft enough to squeeze easily, but occasionally, even when you're not squeezing, it makes a blob of water where you don't want it. So I have demonstrated that elsewhere, but this one, of course, is not going to do it right now. That's the large in that one, and this is the small. I don't have a medium of the uh, Pentel Aquash but this would allow you to do some really nice detail work. They're fun fun tools, uh, but once again, they don't hold much water. They hold considerably more than the little Sakura Travel, of course, but still just over a tablespoon. I measured it. Um, these are uh, Nijis, which is, which is what I use most often. I really like them. They're dependable and, and handy. And you can see that it's a different length. This is their travel one, so it doesn't hold as much water. But it does have, this is the large brush. It does have a reasonable size brush. Again, that's a, a large. Oh, so is that. I'm just demonstrating large, large here. This is the medium. And this is the small. Nietzsche, and it's quite small. You can do fine details and lettering and all sorts of fun things with it. This is the flat Nietzsche. None of the other brands, as far as I know, make a flat. So this is very nice to have if you like painting with a flat brush. The only problem with Nietzsche is that they do fill differently. And you either have to pop this black plastic uh, cap off in order to fill them, or you have to hold it down in water and squeeze it and kind of uh, pull the water up into it, or you can hold it under a faucet and do the same thing. It's a little bit more awkward, but um, really nice dependable brushes, so I'm okay with that. This is the Holbein, which is uh, which holds the most water of any of them, but uh, it's very difficult to find in the USA. A friend of mine, Laurie Ferlita, sent me this one, and she ordered it from Canada or someplace. Anyway, it has a different kind of hairs, and uh, this is the large. It's, it's a nice brush. I keep one of these in my field bag at all times and find myself using it quite often. And once again, it feels 
oops, and it's one that unscrews this way. Once again, it fills this way by just holding it under uh, running water. That's a very nice feature. Now, in comparing these to uh, actual watercolor brushes, you can see that even the largest water brush is not all that big. It's kind of comparable to a number six. Um, if, if you haven't found this out already, the uh, various brush brands will have kind of some variation in their size, but this is um, Liquitex's number six. And this is a low Cornell number eight which is a size that I carry with me a lot to paint. This is a number 10, which is also very handy. Holds tons of water and you can make nice big washes with it. As I say, this is uh, Niji's flat. It's the largest they have. And this is a 3 quarter inch flat watercolor brush. Kind of a lot of difference there, actually, isn't there? So, let's demonstrate some of the uh, some of these works in progress. I'm going to go ahead and spray my uh, old prang set of watercolors in order to refresh my paints and make them pick up better and stronger. Oops, and I got some on my paper, so we'll just turn that page. Oops. Now, let's get some of these out of the way, so I'm not tripping over them. That'd be good, wouldn't it? Oh, poo. And I got paint on my... Oh, well. <laughs> We're not going to worry about that either. So I'll move that there so you can probably see it better. One thing that can be a problem with um, water brushes is that they're not that fast to clean up or to change uh, color in the middle of. So demonstrate what I mean by that. Nice strong wash of ultramarine. And now if I want to clean my brush so I can change colors, sometimes you can get quite a bit of color out by just wiping it. But then you need to waste some of your precious uh, paint water by squeezing it through the brush bristles. And you can see I'm still not quite clean or ready to mix up, say, an unsullied yellow wash. It would be just slightly green. Oops. And with a regular watercolor brush and a source of water, let's see what we can do. Again, a nice strong wash. Swish it out in water. And it's clean. Here's uh, there's not much blue left in that, but there is a tiny bit after wiping and wiping. So if you want to change colors in a hurry or clean your brush in a hurry, the best way to do it is with a nice source of water. This is a, a plastic jar that's very uh, stable since it's square. And um, I bought it in the herb department, actually. So uh, I always like to make use of different things. Now, let's compare sizes. Uh, as I said, this is the largest um, water brush that you can get in a, a round brush. And it, it'll make a nice swoop of paint. I am not complaining about that in the least. and. Uh, you can keep squeezing extra water out and extend how long you can go. The, the uh, pigment will get diluted, of course, so that you're going to have lighter and lighter marks, but sometimes that's what you want. Um, now, let's see what we can do with a comparable watercolor brush. I'm not uh, dipping it in water yet, and it's still getting lighter and lighter each time, which is kind of cool. Now, 
as you can see the uh, oops the Niji the largest um, flat water brush there is it's capable of a lot of interesting marks you don't have to just do squares you can wiggle and squiggle and make dots and stamp with the edge and all sorts of cool things I've even done dry brush with it like this you can do uh, weathered wood or hair or fur or all sorts of things with that but you can't do it as long as you can hmm, with another what I do it with a paper towel with another brush and again cleaning your brush takes quite a bit longer than it does with a regular watercolor brush as you can see uh, I'll get my oops try to get this one out of here it's kind of comparable to that size but uh, a little bit bigger I don't think I actually own a watercolor brush a real watercolor brush that is as small as this so again with a uh, regular watercolor brush you can make all sorts of marks and uh, definitely don't have to be uh, mechanical looking and again you can do dry brush and in order to clean your brush swish it out quickly and then I could switch to another color and have it be pretty clean and the reason my yellow isn't as clean as it could be is because I haven't cleaned it on my palette so <laughs> it looks a little funky but that's okay now we're gonna try a little bit more of a comparison about what the brushes can do or will do and let's see you don't often need a flat brush a flat wash in nature after all how many things are flat but with a, a good size water brush you can get a fairly flat one you do have to keep going back and reloading in order to keep it fairly even and you just keep drawing that bead of color down the page oops I washed it out in my water just like it was a regular watercolor brush if you want to do a graded wash you do the same thing but instead of dipping back into your oops water or back into your paint you just keep squeezing a little extra water out through the bristles and sometimes that's going to want to back run so you may not like that too much it's hard to get it really clear enough doing this to uh, fade off completely so I blotted again a little bit and it's still not clear of course as you can see so let's try that with a regular watercolor brush these actually do hold quite a bit more paint too than a water brush does again it works better on a tilted page like this and I'm going to go back in for a little bit more paint continue to pull it down the page if you have a bead at the bottom um, you're going to want to pick that up with um, a blotted out brush I don't have one here but you can pick it up like that or you can take the edge of a Kleenex and pick up any back run and let's see how we do with that graded wash with a real watercolor brush Again, pulling the, the wash down the page. Oh, it's getting sunny out. And then adding a little bit of extra water to keep pulling down and allowing the paint to flow down the page. You can flick the excess water out of your brush if you want to. By that, I just mean go boop like that. So. <laughs> Anyway, you can see, oh dear, I got some uh, paint in my damp wash here, so it's going to have speckles. Oh well, that's okay. As you can see, you can get a smoother effect with a real watercolor brush than you can with um, 
a water brush, usually. Now, there are people who are really, really good at using water brushes, and they may be able to do a better job than I can. Uh, if you want to wet your paper first, sometimes that allows you to make a smoother wash with a water brush. So let's give that a try. You want to? Oh, I keep trying to dip it in water. Ah, you can tell I've painted with watercolor a long time in my own way. And it kind of explodes and spreads. And it'll do that with any brush, really, depending on how wet your page is. Needing to go back for a reload. And let's try a graded wash over here. Let's see how that goes. <laughs> Peppy wants in and he's pawing on the window. No! <laughs> Not right now, buddy. I'm kind of busy. Oops. Hmm. Okay, well. So, you can try that for some interesting effects. And choose your tool for your occasion. If you are, as I say, traveling, uh, if using a <laughs> peppy, quit it. If using the whole setup is not convenient, like on a the tray table on an airplane or in a cafe or something, a water brush is marvelous. Also, if you're working smaller, a water brush can be very handy, like in your journal or, or for an ATC, an artist trading card. But for anything this size, uh, 9 by 12 or larger, you're probably going to want uh, a source of fresh water and a decent sized brush. So, I hope that was interesting.